Hi there, welcome back to the feather nest. Um, we're going to try to do another round of hatching or incubation videos. A um, few changes from last time um, that I wanted to share. So first let's go over just set up is where we're going to go today and setting the eggs. That's all this video is going to cover. So behind me is mine. Um, I have mine set in a closet in room that is part of the regular house air conditioning heating system. So it's climate controlled room. Um, and then it's also in this closet when the closet door stays closed at all times. So it's dark. It helps with controlling the level of the temperature and humidity. Um, as you can see, I have an Amazon special incubator. I actually have two of them. We're not using this one right now. And I haven't had my incubator on in a couple months. So I got it out a couple days ago, plugged it in. Well, first you have to clean it. I use bleach and water. That's all. I wash it down, um, spray it down with the bleach water solution, let it sit for a second, come back. I have a toothbrush because this one has like little grooves along it and it gets, when they hatch, they get the feathers and dander just goes all over. It sticks to everything. So I do like this one because I can take everything except for the turning tray, which never gets dirty and the lid, which I can just wipe off. But the whole part that gets dirty on hatching, I can take to the bathtub and wash it out there. So washed it out, let it dry completely all the way. Um, put it back together. I have down here, if you can see it, and I'll show a better picture in a minute. I have that rubber shelf liner. Um, not the sticky kind, but it's the like squishy rubbery shelf liner. You can get it at Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Um, cut it to fit the bottom. Um, I use it in both incubators. It helps with any gaps that they could possibly fall through, get stuck in. It helps with cleanup. You can take it out after and wash it with Dawn dish soap, hang it up, let it dry. Make sure you squeeze it out because it will hold soap. Um, next, so put everything together. Now at hatching time, we'll put another layer of paper towels on top of that just to help with all the mess. But right now it doesn't matter because we have the turner in there. Um, make sure everything is set up. The lid is on. Like this one will get, if it's not on all the way, it's wiggly. So you know it's on by if it's stiff. Um, if you have an incubator like this, or any incubator possibly, um, the packaging styrofoam, keep it, cut it to fit what you need. Um, there's a hole out here for the fan. Um, this one, I wish I got it secondhand, so I wish I would have this styrofoam to put around the bottom. Um, I don't. It works okay without it being in the closet. This piece at the moment goes to that bottom incubator, but I'm not using it, so we're going to borrow it. So keeping it insulated, keeping that heat in, it's hard. Um, next is putting it all together. I have it all set up and just letting it come to its own temperature, letting it get evened out. So that takes several hours, um, sometimes a full day, just to get its kinks out. This one went off crazy for a whole day about the humidity, and it's still, I can't do it backwards, it's still going off, but I turned the alarm off because I don't need it. Like we've talked about before, I dry hatch. What that means is I don't care about that humidity uh, until lockdown, day 18. Um, until then, no water at all is added. No humidity is added. We just go by the ambient humidity. On day 18, I will add enough to bring it up to 60-65%. Um, best purchase ever. You can get them on Amazon, 15, 20 bucks. Look for an Amazon special. 
Um, it blew t it Bluetooth. It does not Wi-Fi. That is the only bad thing. So the step up would be a Wi-Fi one, but it Bluetooth to my phone. So this is inside the incubator and I can sit in the living room. I do not have to come and open it a hundred times to check the temperature and the humidity levels. Not that we're checking humidity right now, but put it in there, let it come to temperature and then start adjusting. You want it to be at 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, as close as you can get it. It is gonna fluctuate, they all do, because they drop down and they heat up, and they drop down and they heat up. So you're gonna have to play with it. Give yourself time to do that, that's okay. Um, it also is a learning process. With each incubator, they are different. They have kinks in each one. Not one is like the other, and I would say it takes me about a year to learn one. And then there's still problems and mix-ups and mess-ups and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's good if you have a battery backup to put them on, like Snowpocalypse last year. Um, we were out without power for, a, I think it was four or five days. Um, they did fine. They, I still had some hatch out of that. I do not have a battery backup. I would love to get one someday. Um, not a surge protector, but a battery backup. And then, okay, so we have it set up. We've come to temperature. We have played and adjusted it so that our internal, this one, is reading the correct 99.5. Mine is reading 99.5 to 99.7, so that that's okay. I can't get it any closer. So now we will, it's been 24 hours of it sitting at the right temperature. So now I'm going to take my eggs. I'm gonna disconnect this. Oh, it's going to get mad. Okay. So I have mine just sitting here in a corner. You can see the black shelf liner and my turning tray. I also have tested it to make sure that it is turning properly, uh, giving it a couple of back and forth. So everything's good to go at this point. Now I have a collection of eggs down here that I've lost track that how old they are. So we'll just see what happens. But you're gonna put them in pointy side. Some of them it's hard to tell. Pointy side down. Kind of hard to tell on some of them. I like to sort mine. I don't know why. OCD maybe. Alright, I'm going to pause this as I fill it up and I'll be right back. Okay. So I have put all the eggs I'm gonna put in here in. I leave a gap where my fan is. The fan comes down from right here. I leave a gap because that way it's not blowing directly on those eggs, but it's fine if it is. I've put them there before. Um, but it's just better temperature control. So that is everything. Now I'm going to connect the turner back on there and put the lid back on and make sure everything is sealed up nice and tight. And we'll be right back. Okay. We have everything closed back up. The turner is reconnected. The lid is on. No wiggle. And the styrofoam is back, styrofoam is back on top. I'm going to, cause see it already says a, a day on mine. I'm gonna reset it. 
back to zero. It's going to already give it a turn. And I'm not going to check these. I have learned, <laughs> as hard as it is, to leave them alone. Do not open it 1,000 times and look at them and candle them 5,000 times and go back and look at it some more. Just forget them. Leave them there and let them do their thing. Come back. If it's killing you, you can check in five days. You will barely be able to see anything. You really can't see anything till day like 7, 8-ish. 10 is good. 10, you can clearly see whether this egg is viable or needs to be taken out. Um, so why risk it? Why open it two other times, one other time, when you're going to come back again on day 10 and check it again? So leave it closed um, until day 10, and that will be part two. And I'll see you then. And thanks for checking in. I'm always around on Messenger if you have any specific questions, um, want my opinions, um, ideas, or thoughts. Um, there's a few wives' tales out there. <laughs> Most of them are not true. Um, and keep in mind that chickens hatch eggs all the time, right? And they are outside, in nature, with the ambient temperatures and humidities out there. Nobody's controlling a thing. They do not add water to their nest. Um, they collect eggs for a couple weeks before they start the hatching process. So, um, you know, sometimes let nature take its course. It's okay. Um, I will see you again in a few days. Thanks for stopping in. Bye-bye. Happy hatching.